and we're live in three. Oh wait, five, four, three. Is saying they're all Markiplier races? You just ruined. You went too early. Now we have to start over. Round about all you shaggy goose egg boys, and welcome back to another episode of Al Pacino's Prison Scene. This is our podcast where Jake is the other guy, and I'm the first guy. You heard me first. I'm Thomas, and this is the podcast we look at movies that objectively have no deeper meaning, except this week maybe it does. I don't know. My Amazon kept buffering, so I I never will never know. This is Jake. Uh, number one, it's my Amazon that you were using. Yeah. So it's number two. Oh well, fair enough. Number two. I have this really strange urge to just watch Surf's Up on repeat. Yeah, you've been mentioning that. I know, man. It's so good. Okay, well, that's not really related. Like to... the ocean meets the moon. To well, take we're talking the about today. Uh, we're talking about the movie Dungeons and Dragons, which may be the worst movie I've ever seen, solely because of how many times it buffered. This movie is supposedly an hour and forty-seven minutes long, but it took me at least four hours to watch it. Because Jake rented it and watched it one day. And when I started the movie, there was nine hours until the rental expired. And when I finished the movie, it said there was five hours until the rental expired. So if math exists, then which we don't know for sure that it does, it could just be a social construct like everything else ever. Think about a Except podcast. What is a podcast? Thomas? Dungeons and Dragons. What is a podcast? Vin Diesel. And is Vin Diesel real? No. Have you ever seen him? No. All you shaggy goose egg boys, have you ever seen Vin Diesel? No. Now you've seen pictures supposedly of Vin Diesel, but have you ever seen him in real life? Okay, I'm gonna take a poll real quick. Everyone, raise your hand if you've seen Rogue One. Oh yes, that's me. I'm not talking to you. Oh, I'm talking to the listeners. Raise your hand if you've seen Rogue One. All right, I'm gonna close my eyes so I can feel how many of you are raising your hands. Do I need to close my eyes too? No, you're not. You're not a part okay, of this. Okay, I'm just making sure. Just here. Okay, I see at least three hands. I can't count that high, so uh, I'm not gonna tell you how high I can count, but it's more than three. All right. Um, it's five. Oh fuck! <laughs> um, I let your secret out. Uh, so I, I just want everyone to know if you get this reference, tweet us at Pacino Pod saying I understood that reference. Oh, I hope I get this reference because I watched um, it over Christmas break. Uh, this because this is how I feel about this movie. Okay, this movie, Dungeons and Dragons. We were this close to greatness. If you get that reference, tweet tweet at, at Pacino Pod. I understood that reference. You can't ask me what it is. Oh, you can ask me after if you remember, but you won't. But did I'll, I? Oh, I'll, did you talk my phone? Okay, good. Because I thought I felt it in my pocket. No, I got okay, it. Good. I'm the phone master. But yeah, so this movie, uh. All right, so I wrote something down for me to say at the beginning of this podcast. All right. <coughs> Sorry, I, I just ate some candy. Which do you think, would you consider high chew candy? Because I don't think I do, but it's on the candy aisle. So I'm going to ask you a question in response. If it's not candy, well, number one, we have to define what candy is. Number two, let's just assume we know the answer to what candy is. Right, I've seen Adventure Time. Number two, if it's not candy, what is it? I don't know. Just gummies. It's a snack. What is gummies? I don't know. Is I gummies just, not candy? I just don't think it's candy. Maybe, I mean, it probably is. I don't Did know. Did you get that from Create? No. Oh. Well, I, I was, was I, I actually was going to go to Create, but I got pulled over. Yeah, Jake's, so when Jake's, he asked Jake's, me, Jake's, Jake's really bad at driving. But, 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 but as I was saying, before I was so a lot of butts. rudely interrupted <laughs> by candy, not candy. Uh, this I wrote this down to say at the beginning of this movie. Oh wait, 
Uh, oh, hold on. I was supposed <laughs> to have a recap. Go. I was supposed to have a recap. Well, well are you supposed to say this, this at the top of the episode, or is that part of the story? No, no, no. This I'm supposed to say this after the recap because I have character names in there. Oh, okay, okay, okay. All right. So, um, a lot has happened to me mentally since I watched this movie, and it took me a long time to watch it because it buffered a lot. So this is the gist. It's only been two days. It's only been one day. Yeah. It's been one day. Yeah. Twenty four hours. Yeah. Uh, I'm pretty sure I was hallucinating earlier. Okay. Today. Yeah. Honestly, I think I. I, I think I was too. Unless I, was, I ran over somebody, but I, I was, was in the acting Zoom call today, and I and I like couldn't see for a second. Like I was like, "What am I looking at?" Okay, but anyways, recap. So it opens Jeremy Irons playing Prismo is like, "Hey, I got to get the dragons." Oh no, I can't do it. Wait. His real name is Prophyrian, but I call him Okay, Prismo. okay, okay, okay. Uh he's, he's got he's got he makes good pickles. Yeah, he does. Um tweet us at never mind. No, just tweet us for the original <laughs> one cuz I want to know if you understood that reference. Don't worry about the pickles thing. Drink a pickle juice. Anyways, um, he's like, I got the dragon. Oh, no, I don't. And then he's like, I'm a political man, and I hate the other girl because she's a liberal. And the liberal, the liberal girl is like, well, I'm the princess, and I hate you because you're a conservative. Okay, girl. wait. I'm pretty sure it's the opposite. No, I'll, I'll elaborate later. Okay, okay. Uh, just No, it's not the opposite. Um, and so, like, that's the thing. It's like there's, like, this political stuff going down. And then, but then, but then you got these thieves that are like, I'm going to go into the magic castle. Uh Uh-oh, we got caught by a girl with glasses, but then she doesn't have glasses anymore. Marlon, what's his name? Marlon Tyrone's or whatever. What's his name? Marlon Wayans? Yeah, there you go. Uh, Is that what the one he is? Yeah, Snail. It's a, I know, but is that the Wayans he is? He's one of them. I think so. He's the one that was in Scream or a a scary movie, I mean. Two, Two of them are in scary movie. Oh. I think uh, it is Marlon. Is I originally I was like, is that Damon? But I looked it up, and Damon does not look like that. I'll be honest, I didn't know there were two. There's like seven. I'll be honest, I didn't know there were two. And but there's, also, there's more beyond the because there's like seven brothers, and then then they have extended family. But also, the guy he looks Why did like you a, not know there was two. Have you seen White Chicks? No. Oh. Um, but the guy looks like a weird mix. Of well, old, I thought he was wearing a Yoda hat. Old and young Harrison Ford, the white guy. Oh, okay. Does that make sense? The other thief, yeah, sure. Um, anyways, uh, they're like magic school, magic, magic girl. Uh oh, we're getting caught. They get chased by the bald guy, Dathomir, and then they <laughs> meet. Then they meet this uh, dwarf somewhere who's one of the guys from Pirates of the Caribbean. And they're, then he's like, okay, I'm in this trash, but I'm coming too. And then they go to the bar, and then Marlon Wayans is like, oh, there's a hot elf. I'm going to go talk to the hot elf. And then the dwarf's like, well, I'm racist, so I'm staying up here. And then he's like, okay. And then bald guy shows up, and everyone's like, uh-oh, got to go, bye. But also a magic girl with glasses, but she doesn't have glasses anymore. And young Harrison Ford went into the map, and now they're friends Young old Harrison Ford. Uh, a mix of both. And then he's like, "Hey, snail, we gotta go. Snail is Marlon Wayne. Snail, snail, we gotta go. We gotta go help these people because I said we would." Bidet. And then they do that. And then fast forward, because uh, a lot of stuff happens. Fast forward, they they go to the maze. They get the red rock. Fast forward, the girl's like, "I'm not giving you my dragon thing." This is the liberal girl. I'm not giving you my dragon thing. And then conservative guy Prismo's like, yes, you are. And then liberal girl's like, no, I'm not. And Prismo's like, well, then we're going to go to war. And then liberal girl's like, good, because everybody needs to be free and have equal rights. Uh, And then rewind slash fast forward, because I don't know where this happened. Uh, Snail dies. uh, Oh, that's like that's. That's like at the very near the very end. And then they're like, they're like "Oh no! How could this happen?" Dathomir no. kills him. Yeah, bald guy. And then uh, they're like, "Oh, I'm mad. We're gonna go get the thing we're after, the staff of S- 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 Pfizer, uh, or whatever it is, because we can control the red dragons." And That's they're like, a "Vaccine." Okay, we got it. And uh, then bald guy's like, "No, I got it, Dathomir." And he's and so he got it, and then he goes to the portal, <laughs> and then young old Harrison Ford is like, "I'm gonna go after him." And then glasses magic girl without glasses is like, "No, don't do that." And then 
he does it, but and then he's alone and he's like, I'm fighting Dathomir because Prismo took out the monster that was in him. Also, Prismo put a monster in him earlier. And then he th- like throws him over the edge. Although uh, apparently, I read that he's the only character that comes back in the second movie. There's a second movie? There's three movies, apparently, but they're not related what? at all to what happens in this one. Based on well, that's how Dungeons and Dragons works. Um, Anyways, the the movie, no, of, we're not, the, the movie's not over yet, Jake. No, 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 I'm telling them what the monster was. Doesn't matter. We're, the Dathomir no, monster not, looks like the not. one that's in Men in Black, you know? No. That's like... Whoosh. I That's a super hot chick. Disregard everything Jake said because I'm doing the recap, not him. Um, and then are and your then, eyes open? Sometimes. <laughs> then glasses girl with the magic without the glasses shows up and she's like, "Bam, gotcha!" My ears. Prismo, I think. And then Prismo's like holding the red rod of Pfizer and's like, "You think you could steal my destiny? I'll create my own, your own destiny." Ah! And then something happens, and young old Harrison Ford gets it, and he's like, no, and he smashes it. And then Prismo's like, no, I don't know what happens to him. And then they go, and then he's like, man, I'm going to get knighted, Snail. I'm talking to your grave. Here's a rock. And he puts the rock on Snail's grave, but then the letters go away. And then the elf girl is like, your, don't question your gift. Your friend awaits. And they walk through a portal, and then presumably they all die because they don't come back in the second movie. And then the credits happen. <laughs> That's the movie. Okay, so what I had to say was, at the beginning of this film, when it, with Prismo says whatever he says, I thought the meaning of this movie was going to be pretty blatant. I thought that it was going to be like a political commentary uh, leaning on the liberal side, that, which is the side that wants for change in the world. And that side would prevail. However, by the end of the film, this meaning gets all mucked up because the film proposes this question of destiny and destinies, but never really answers it. Uh Uh, Better out than in, I always say. So, um, initially, I thought it was going to be all political. Yeah, yeah. But then by the end, it's like, well, stuff happened. But what did what really happen? Ooh, I didn't think of that back yeah, that way, Charles. That was a long-winded uh, recap, but... Um, also, if you want to watch this movie, you have to pay for it, so don't watch it. But um, Also, but there's a new one, like a reboot, that got announced recently, I think. So usually, Maybe not a reboot, but it is called Dungeons & Dragons. All right, I hope you're and I hope it. Vin Diesel's involved, because he loves Dungeons & Dragons. Well, he's involved in a new art game. Did you know that? Yeah, it looks really dumb. <laughs> I mean, I'm not a big survival game boy anyway. I'm not a big Vin Diesel guy. He smells bad. Well, he's not real, so. No, true enough. Uh, but this is a, a audio podcast, so you can't really see him. But very usually, Thomas is very expressive in his recap. This time, he was stiff as a board. I told you a lot has happened to me mentally and, and since, I, since, since And I don't yesterday. know if he was actually saying things. Or, like, noises were just coming out. They know. If that makes sense. And then secondly, I'll say that I took the meaning of moral relativism or moral ambiguity in this film. What is What does that mean? Basically, there is no right or wrong. How did you get that? I don't remember. Okay. Because I watched this two days ago, and a lot well, has happened. I thought you watched it Friday. When did you watch it? Yesterday. Today's Monday. No, I think I watched it Saturday. No, I can go through it. Had it had to have been Friday? No, dude, I don't know. We're just we're just spilling all the behind the scenes. Well, because because I because I was behind the scenes beans. That should be our after show. Because I was with the boys all like all Saturday. Boise, Idaho, the New Hampshire, up in Vermont, Montpelier. Oh, I just did Vermont. And then, Sacramento, California, and there's something down the way. Blah, 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 blah. Chesapeake Bay. They have wonderful clam chowder. You know that's from? I had to watch that in No. Grade. Was that Trump? No, it's the Animaniacs. Oh. <laughs> but was that, who Who said? They it's have wacko. the best clam chowder I've ever had. No, it's they have wonderful clam chowder. It didn't sound like that, though. Anyway. That sounds like the I like turtles. Something like that. So cool. imagine what Thomas has had, and then double that because it was two days and not just one. Yeah, um, I'm also 
existentializing and self-actualizing. Yeah, but you're so always that, that too. So shut up. Oh, well, fair All enough. Right, so let you, me see. Hold on. Let me see me, if I can remember. You want me to define liberals and conservatives? No. Oh, the well, first thing. Happen. Well, what I want to say is that this was made by New Line Cinema. Yes, they which also is the, made Shazam. That too, but they also made Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles in 1990. Well, we already talked about that. Well, I know, and I said it was one of my favorite movies. So I'm saying that you know this is going to be good. But it wasn't. Although I think... If watch, it, watch it a second time. I was going to say, I think that if it didn't buffer a lot, I think I actually would have liked this movie. Because the first time I watched this was in high school, and Lucas actually owns oh, the Oh, so DVD. you had seen this movie. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why I put it in, because I had seen it. And I don't remember anything but the weird monsters in Dathomir's ears. Because the first time I watched it was at Lucas's uh, lake house over the summer, I think senior year of high school. And it was at like three o'clock in the morning. So I was like in and out of sleep because I was like trying you, to watch the movie. You started it? Yeah. 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 Why? I don't know, Thomas. Okay. And it was on like one of those old like box TVs too. So it was just a wild ride. But watching it a second time, I, it, it, it's still got a lot of problems. But How do you open your. Oh, here it is. But it looks better. Or it was better than the first time I watched it. Um, oh, 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 okay. No, 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 it wasn't. Frank Zappa song. I don't think it was. I what our next episode is. I think the moral ambiguity kind of came about. Like, there's a lot of, like, contradiction. Who is this? That's Tenet. Who texted me? Is it that girl? No, it's Hannah. Dang. Wait, Hannah? Thomas? I don't know. That's what it said. Let me see. Don't worry about it. Okay. Well, now it's gone. Now it says AP died like your reaction. Okay. I don't know what that means. Um, that's what it says. Oh. Um, your phone, man. That's that's your phone. Your rules. Give me that wrapper. So get that corn out of my face. You just spit all over me. <laughs> get that spit off of my face. Um. Is that like there's a lot of especially with color there's a lot of like moral contradiction. This so far this podcast is really how this movie goes because. It is it's like it's there like are political <laughs> thief political again. An haven't hour you later. haven't you ever heard of honor among thieves? So like so like, so like <laughs> the the actual movie. I feel like the pacing is a little off, but for me the pacing was way off because I would like the political storyline is not really the focus, and so like there's it only shows up like every thirty minutes or so. Yeah, but for me that was like every hour and a half. <laughs> well, and I and I agree with that, and that's where and like. That's where I was saying like this moral contradiction comes because the very first one is is uh, Prismo, and and we see this in Star Wars and Star Wars did it first um, because that was an original story because every story is original. Say Star Wars the first, yeah. Um, but uh, Prismo, so Rogue One, no Phantom Menace Rain. Episode One. Well, okay, true enough, but. Um, Prismo, the first, and and I think it would have been better the opposite way around. But we see Prismo. The first time we see Prismo, he is an evil mage guy, yeah, or a wizard. What he's making called. a dragon, right? And then the second time we see him is in his pit- political climate, where he is trying to. What is he trying to do? He wants. To, he wants. To, he wants the thing to win the power. But as far as like in the Senate or whatever they are, the council. He wants to get the Empress away. Right, because he thinks that having her away. Now, granted, this is for his own uh, power. Nefarious purposes. Right. Ow. But it would seem on the outside, at least, and, and this is how Palpatine did it. It seems on the outside that he is trying to do something good, something for the people. Um, and he also wears like these white and gold robes. Which. You just fart. No. Something smells bad. I thought I heard it fart. My nose doesn't work. But, uh... Uh, That could mean something. And if it means something, then I'm screwed. Did I have COVID? Yes. Oh, no, I don't. My nose has never worked. I've already told you this. Uh... Anyway. Uh... (laughs) Anyway. So he's wearing these white and gold robes, which are... Yeah. Which are typical of like the savior figure, which is totally not what Pro Prismo is, and it's actually the opposite of what he is. He is the antagonist, and like this is where it differs in um, Star Wars is that Palpatine does wear these dark red and black robes, so there isn't that symbolism of like saviorship. I'm glad you brought up Palpatine because I don't I didn't write this down, but watching this, 
Uh, by the end, I thought that this movie handled ooh, better at the end. I always say, I thought this movie handled the political commentary better than the prequels did. Yeah, and I and I absolutely agree. And this is why I'm saying like that, that I think there is definitely there. Uh, I think that there is a second viewing at least, and possibly a third viewing once you have established. So, so the first viewing for you is watching the movie, right? This is how always you say it, and then the second viewing is analyzation. Yeah. At least in terms of this podcast. Are your fingernails blue or is it just the way I'm looking at them? You're you're making me trip right now. I'm not even kidding. <laughs> like I can't tell if you're looking at me or not or no, they're not blue. They look blue. But for a second I questioned if they were. What was I saying? Um Oh, oh, so a second viewing is worth like analyzing, right? Picking up, you know, this meaning that you're looking for. But then I think that this film especially deserves a third viewing once you have established what your meaning is and then really trying to pick that apart and a lot of movies i haven't said this for any of the movies we've done so far but i think this one in particular definitely requires that of you because it is just such a bad movie but the meaning is definitely there for sure and like and i operate under the assumption a lot of people have told me that i shouldn't do this but i operate under the assumption that everything in a, any given film is intentional because what I've learned in, in film school or whatever you want to call it, and I feel like, Thomas, you, you have learned the same thing as I have. I go to boating school. Is that, all right, SpongeBob, is that as a filmmaker, what you want to do is control your meaning. And by doing that, it requires detail of every aspect of a frame. Sorry, and this, I, I and this thought is, I saw a Beyblade in your cup. No, but I do have Beyblades on my bookshelf. And this is what this is what Patrick is telling us. Patrick Underwood is um, our professor for visual storytelling. He's got a film out called The Middle Distance. Go check it out. It's on Amazon Prime. Um, shout out Patrick Underwood. But he but now we're learning the idea of visual storytelling, like all of these elements of the frame outside of the character and the story that that tell emotions and and give emotions. And I think that this is a very long winded say. Uh, statement to back up what i've been saying about what i said about the gold and the white oh you're still on about that yeah well i have a question well, well there, there's you. there's more examples of this but that was the first one and what's your question do you think this movie was intended as a spoof like a satire of fantasy movies or was it intended to be like completely serious so i it goes back and forth I yeah feel like. so i and was I think, actually hold on hold on hold on, hold on. I think the inclusion of Marlon Wayans points to it being a satire movie because like you mentioned, he was in scary movie mm -hmm. one and two. And those are like the, the kinds of movies that he's famous for. Yeah. I, I honestly, I totally think so. When was uh, Lord of the Rings made? It was, it, it, was, it, was, it was around the same time because this came out in 2000 and Return of the King was 2003. So I think it was 2001, 2002, 2003. So this would have been oh, Fellowship of the Ring was 2001. OK, yeah, so, so that just proves my theory. So I, so I was going to be like, oh, well, maybe, you know, that dwarf is uh, representative of Gimli. But I, they, I mean, the books existed. That's true. That is very true. That is very true. And um, yeah, I, I was thinking about that, that dwarf. I said this in the recap. He's either Pintel or Rigetti. I don't know if you noticed. Which that is the not. short boys, right? Yeah, he's the he's the one without the wooden eye. Um, the one that says. Oh, I know you're air Oh, yes, 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 yes. Oh, I didn't know that. Okay, yeah. cool. Um, I, I would definitely uh, venture on the side of agreeing with you that it is a spoof. Because oh, I, I wasn't saying it was. I was asking you. No, no, no. I, I, I would Inten I would say. But, but do you think it was intended to be a spoof or intended to be like a serious movie? Again, I'm going to operate under the assumption that everything is intentional, which would point to the fact that, yes, it is indeed a spoof. Because a lot of times spoofs are, you know, societal and in this case, political commentary on like the operations that we live under. And I think that this and especially with my idea of like moral ambiguity, ambiguity and contradiction. And obviously we haven't heard yours yet because I've just been rambling. Um, but I but I do think that there are definitely elements, like you said, uh, Gimli. Um, and then just this like overly evil guy. Right, which is which was super common in fantasy uh, films. You know, um, one I'll point out that actually I think is another reference is um, Never Ending Story. Is that a Never Ending Story? There is just this holy evil, and the movie is called The Nothing, 
that is just meant to destroy and not even destroy just how would you how would you how what words would you use just to say to to erase existence thanosine yes there you go we'll use that and i was i was actually watching this the uh empress looked strikingly similar to the empress in never ending story and i actually looked it up to see if it was uh, in this movie or the, the never ending story? story. Um, I haven't seen it. I just know it's a horse. Oh no, it's not the girl with the horse, okay. and that's a guy. And his name is Artax. You're a guy. I sure am. I'm the horse. But she bears a striking resemblance to to the, the, to the Empress. Boy. To the never ending story. That means I own you. So I definitely agree with that with that statement. All right, let, let, how long have I been talking? Okay. Um... Because I think this is why I said we were so this was so close to greatness or whatever I said earlier. Uh, which if you understand, can I ask you who it is yet? No, oh my God. we're still in the podcast. All right, well I'm gonna press pause and then no, we could pick it back up. That's not allowed. You better not accidentally hit something. It's empty. No, I'm talking about a button. Oh, don't accidentally Bink. hit a button. Bing bonk. Jeez, jeez, jeez. Uh, hey, you know if if you never mind, that's a bad joke. Um, <laughs> No uh, jokes about you. What was joke. I saying? Nothing I yet. Think, oh, yeah, oh, you you mentioned uh, the quote. Oh, oh, we were this close to greatness. I think that maybe at one point it was intended to be a spoof, but then they didn't go all in. And if they would yeah, have gone all in, I think this would have been Oops. a better movie for that. And because like the movie opens with a narration, and but then the narrator's never heard from ever again. Right. So when that started, I thought that maybe that that narrator or narrator i don't know if anyone says it like that uh was going to be like the dungeon master yeah 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 Uh, but then he never came back and so like i think if the narrator was narrating throughout and maybe the characters reacted to it and like a fourth wall kind of way then that would have helped elevate this movie because it's it's a very ridiculous movie first of all um but then also you have like the themes of destiny that are prevalent throughout um yeah, I'll give you another reference. Destiny is all. Do you know that one? Ten bucks. Nobody knows that. I hope so. It's a great show. Better not be community. No, it's not. Good. David Bowie. Um. All right, I don't know what I was saying. So back to politics. All right, Jake said that it was flipped. That uh, Jeremy Irons is the liberal, and the little girl is the conservative. That's Prisma, right? So why why did you say that? Say what? What I just said. I was not listening. I, I'm trying that to Jer- read. That Jeremy, well, stop reading. You're illiterate. Uh, Jeremy, you said when I said that. You just call me Jeremy. No, I'm talking about Jeremy Irons in the movie. <laughs> Jeremy Irons, you said that he would be the liberal and she would be the conservative. Oh well, I, I was just going to say that that because I, I had the definitions, so I want to prove you wrong. Well, I'm sure you're right. But I just I want to um, hear your one, reasoning because that might prove my point even more. But like I thought I thought that uh Prisma was trying to change things and that um little girl was trying to keep things the way they were. All right, well then you need to watch this movie on another viewing because <laughs> All right, so defining the words liberal and conservative. Okay, let me Everyone uh, put your MAGA hats on. Cause I'm so to... this is actually in development from. Uh... Yes, I know. I read the Wikipedia. Oh. They don't know. You can tell them. Oh, okay. So the original. So there, there was a uh, property requirement in 1980 is when they started working on the idea of making a Dungeons Dragons film. Dungeons and Dragons. What did I say? You slurred. Oh, sorry. It's Which, all the water. How many dungeons were there in this movie? Was there more than one? I think there was only one. More like Dungeon and Dragons, am I right? Yeah. But the script began work in 1991, uh, and then it was finalized (gasps) in 97. So it took six years to write this. Suicide Squad was written in like three months. Well, and you like Suicide Squad. Do I? I thought you did. Sometimes. I've only seen it twice. Um... I like when Killer Croc goes in the sewer and he's like, wah, 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 wah. "That's cool." And then when guy when guy gets real big and fiery, he's like, "Oh yes, sir. Oh, that's, rah, cool. Rah. that's cool." And then gets blown up. All right. Anyways, so this is what this is. 
I think a lot of people, and this is why I looked these up, because I think a lot of people use these words, liberal and conservative. And they have no idea what they, I agree with you. Today, well, not necessarily that they have no idea what they mean. Oh, it's him. But the meanings have kind of been Ew, contorted. I like the way he looks. A, a certain way. All right, Jake's probably looking at photos of himself again. Um, so if you look up the... Uh, the stunts were Justin Whalen. He does not look... All right, can I say Now he kind of looks like Harrison I'm Ford. I'm trying to educate the people! And uh, who's the guy that was the Alden acting Aaron guy? Reich? No, the acting guy, but he's not here anymore. He what? looks like uh, Jeremy Renner. Robin Williams. No. Heath Ledger. No, the acting professor at Larry UNA. King. At UNA. Oh, he's, Charlton. He's dead. Uh, Charlton, yes, he yeah, looks like I was a... listening to people who aren't here anymore. Oh, um, God, he looks I, like I... Harrison Ford and Charlton. Can I tell the people? <laughs> All right, uh... which you can Google this because I I just googled the words and these are the definitions. So there are like there are political definitions and then actual definitions. Okay, so like the actual definition of liberal is. Willing to respect and accept behavior or opinions different from one's own, open to new ideas. So basically, being liberal, not politically, means being like open to change. So I think, I think, in my opinion, uh, change is necessary for progress. So more people should be liberals than conservatives. And if you disagree with that, that's cool. That's just what I think. And the real definition for conservative is. Someone who is averse to change or innovation and holds traditional values, which, okay. is, which are which are mainly people that are like back in my day. So liberal is the opposite, right? Because I didn't blah, hear blah. what you said. Liberal is willing to is basically just like you're open to change. Okay, okay, okay. And then politically, a liberal is a supporter of political and social philosophy that promotes individual rights, civil liberties, democracy, and free enterprise. Yeah, I and that's, that's I, very I, much the goal of the empress because like she mentions that uh she wants mages and thieves to be the same yeah okay 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 i got you now and then conservative politically is a person who favors free enterprise private ownership and socially traditional ideas which i'd like to point out both of these groups uh support free enterprise so we're not we're we're, are we were we so different Whatever Optimus Prime uh, says. <clears throat> Were we so different? So we all like free enterprise, baby. Let's just get along. Let's just, I'll say. I don't know what free enterprise is, but we all like it. I think it's the free market. Well, what does that mean? All right. Like, uh, that's, no, we don't care about that. Okay. This is an economics class. This all is right. Dungeons and Dragons. But um, I think what Jeremy Irons, Prismo, Porphyrian, Professor dumbass is trying to do <laughs> bleep is uh he wants things to go back to like the way they were so that yeah. to me is very conservative yeah he's not trying so like he is trying to quote unquote change things but he's not trying to change things to progress he's trying to change things to, well, to revert revert yeah. things to like keep everyone separate and stuff so so li- liberality is not change it's progression i think progressive yeah. that's how uh, that's how i view it flow. because like you can't progress without change. Yeah. And, you know, if everything stays the same, we would still be drawn on cave walls. Painting on cave walls. Okay. No, yeah, yeah, I totally agree with you. And I think that there is huge, and I think there is huge political commentary here, but not to a certain party. And I may disagree with what I just said because uh, Prismo is definitely the bad guy here. At least that's what well, we see, but I don't think he's the bad guy because what he's trying to do is bad. I think he's the bad guy because of the way he goes about doing it. And is his bad. intentions, right? Just just because you are bad guy does not mean you are bad, bad guy. guy. And that I think that was a very bad Zangief impersonation. And I think that this is really seen with Dathomir's character, specifically in the scene when he gets the mage who wears glasses, but she took him off so she's not wearing glasses. When he captures her and the weird monster come out of his ears, and he's, and he's like, like, help me! Yeah, no, absolutely. Because he's like, if I don't do this, I will die. Which? And so it's not, he, uh, Dathomir isn't doing this because he wants to. He's doing this for survival. And is that a, an unknowable cause? Absolutely not. I mean, I think that that's, you know, we are 
animals that are meant to survive. And so that's what he's doing. And although, you know, this decision is uh, being promoted with evil intentions from Prismo, Dathomir is not an evil person, I don't think. Now, granted, he does kill Snail. But again, I mean, I think that this is... Spoilers. This, we already said that. Yeah, but I was doing a recap. Um, but I do think that there are elements of da- Dathomir being more than just this evil guy. Um, uh, so uh, I think the monster within Dathomir is actually a metaphor and is representative oh, the power of, within. of uh, Stanley Milgram's obedience experiment or obedience theory or whatever. So which I learned about this in psychology because I took that class last semester. So I still remember stuff I learned there. Um, basically what the obedience experiment conducted by Stanley Milgram proved was that, you know, if certain, he was trying to wonder, he was trying to prove that, you know, the Nazis were, were they truly like just following orders or whatever? So what, how the experiment works is there's a guy who is, who's like the instructor and you come in to, you get, all right, hold on. Let me start. There's this guy who's the teacher. And he's telling you to shock another guy, but you, oh, you, yeah, you, you yeah, can't yeah. see. Yep, I, I know what you're talking about. And so you think that you're shocking somebody, but that other person is not actually not getting shocked at all. And so the teacher, who is like this authority figure, keeps telling you to up the voltage. And the screams on the other side of the wall keep getting louder. And like I think it was like 80% of people went up to like the max voltage without even questioning the teacher. And so it's like this thing that like the closer that an authority figure is to you, the more likely you are to just be obedient regardless of your own morals. Yeah. And so I think that kind of speaks to what you were saying just then about the monster within him. And I don't know if this was intentional or not, but I think it's definitely a reading that can be read. Yeah. Again, I always uh, operate under the assumption that it is. And speaking of authority, like let's go back to Ghostbusters, right? Just we're talking about obedience. Now let's talk about blind obedience. Is that like why? And so maybe this breaks down my idea that uh, Dathmir um, isn't a bad guy. But like, why is he? Why is he helping him? Why is he helping Prismo? And and maybe that's where that's where part of this film also falls short is that there's no motivation from him other than he's a lackey. Well, I do think um, if if. There, if there was not mixed messages, I definitely would have said this is like the nin, the team Ninja Turtles movie that we did, in that I think that there is like a blatant meaning and it has no place on our podcast. But because of the because the movie mucks it up so bad, I think it does have a place here. But I, and I'm and I'm glad you put this in the fishbowl because I do think you know the whole political argument is very interesting, Good. especially to be made in this movie. And if I can go back to that for a bit, um, there are several quotes throughout the movie. You know, I mentioned in the recap that the dwarf is racist. Really, everyone in this movie is pretty racist. Yeah, yeah, and I and I wrote that down too. Is that like, like there's quotes? Um, here's one. That that's exactly the sort of half baked illiterate drivel that proves commoners are really common. And that's something the mage says to the um, main guy, Harrison Ford guy. And then he snaps back something, I don't know, something about mages. Bidet. Oh, uh, here we go. Nope. Oh, well, here's a quote from someone else. You're a mage, disrespect, disrespecting your family by consorting with thieves. And like, there, there's quotes like this throughout the whole movie. I didn't write down all of them. Um, but, yeah. Don't be racist, guys. And I totally agree with you, but I would also, I'm also going to devil's advocate here, is that when they are in that tavern or whatever, everybody seems to be, at least on some level, like getting along. Yeah. Like, it's, well, it's odd think, that it's a safe haven. I think this is also where, if the film went all in on being a spoof or a satire, this could have been a, a, more of a strength for the film. Because, you know, within Dungeons & Dragons, you have a class system. It's not, you know, like serfs and whatever. Uh, that's S E R F, not S U R F. I'm not a freaking idiot. I was gonna say a bad word, but I don't do that. Yeah, we're not penguins. Yeah, we're not penguins. Um, what was I saying? Oh, because because Dungeons and Dragons has the class system. It's like they kind You're of talking play... about like ranger, barbarian, fighter. Yeah, well, like a... like in the in the movie, you have the thief, the mage, right? The dwarf, okay, so yeah, 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 the elf. There's different cl- there's different classes and you so can like, play, different races you can play. Even yeah. though. 
you know, the mages and the thieves are both human. Mm-hmm. They're still like, oh, I'm mages are smarter than thieves right. or whatever. Yeah, yeah. And but I think you know, so like they kind of play with that a little bit. But other than those lines that happen here and there, there's not really any progression to it. And then at the end, they're like, ha ha, yeah, we're friends, even though they never really evolved or whatever. Well, so and I, I think I think like say Phil Lord and Chris Miller, for instance, I think could make a very good. Dungeons and, Dungeons and Dragons satire movie. The other people behind Lego Movie, Fly with Fancy Meatballs, Into the Spider Verse, Clone High, a bunch of other stuff. Um, I did not like Clone High. I know you didn't, but you also saw that episode when Abe ate a, like nine. Oh or my something. god, stop! Uh, go watch Clone High on YouTube. It's, it's a great show. Um, anyways, no, uh, class system, racism, not cool, but there, there. I think the commentary could have been more handled well, or. My brain's really not working. No, I, I, I absolutely agree with you, but I do think on some level it works as specifically as it relates to my, you know, a meaning that I have here is this idea like moral ambiguity and contradiction. From the get-go, we see a mage, he's evil. And then we see Harrison Ford and uh, Snail say that mages are evil. And so that we have this, this, this statement that has been proven by what we've seen on screen. And then we have another character who's a mage. And so from what we know so far, it would have been safe to assume that this mage was also evil. I think my eyes are going wonky because now your lips trying to look blue. I think you're I Maybe think my you're eyes are just too. dying of hypothermia. I really hope not, because I can't feel myself right now. My I body can't feel my face when I'm, I'm with you, you. But I love it. Um but I think that there is that again. Don't that con- trademark as Sean Mendez. Is he seeing that? I have no idea. Well, I can. Um, but yeah, there is I this con- you, Sean. But yeah, there's this contradiction where we, from what we know, mages are bad, but then this mage is one of the saviors, one of the heroes. And then these thieves, you know, and, and this is a typical trope, right? But everyone in this film is like that. Then we see the thieves. Thieves are morally ambiguous, yes, but often lead lead towards not evil, but wrong. Well, I definitely think that the main character, Harrison Ford, an old young, young guy, was very much an Aladdin type character. Yeah, I got that vibe absolutely. Him a lot. Um, and and I, let me. I want to specify that there's a difference between, at least in my eyes, there is a difference between good and evil and right and wrong. Those are two very different dichotomies. And so this is what I'm, this is what I mean when I say that, that young old Harrison Ford was not evil. He was morally no, ambiguous. he broke the staff. He went, not today, Satan. He was wrong. Right. You're breaking it? No, 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 no. I, I'm saying I, in, like in his role as a thief. Oh. Because what he's doing is not evil. Well, but is he wrong or is society wrong? Huh? There you go. Did you watch Megamind? And that's the question, right? That really is the Big question. Big blue head lives do matter. And this is the distinction is that as that right and wrong is developed from moral societal morals and then good and evil are more universal. Yeah. So 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 if we look at the world that Prisma is trying to live in, being racist is not wrong although it may be uh, evil well i'm saying i'm saying when, when where he lives where mages are above everyone else here here i'm gonna quote you from uh uh a, a different episode if you're racist shut up okay honestly and that's exactly right and so being racist is is evil it is not it was not it Hear me? Don't just, take this out. Just, don't know, don't fred me, bro. Don't don't. As Eddie Burback would say, don't clip this. Don't clip but this. Remember whatever Jake's about to say. Remember what I'm saying. If you're racist, shut up. But in Prismo's world, being racist is not wrong. And I forgot why I was talking about that. Oh oh oh, because because uh, um, they're wrong, but that doesn't mean they're not good. And I think you know the dwarf too. It, again, is extremely morally ambiguous. You know, he's a scoundrel as well, but he ends up being a hero. Well, he's pretty blatantly racist. But I think that's also taken directly from Lord of the Rings because, like, Gimli and Legolas hate each other until the third movie. Right. And then then Gimli's like, ha-ha, you're my best friend! That one doesn't count! Yeah, because they're, yeah. Um, yeah. 
Oh, I made a note on my phone for me to read. Oh, you want to go get it right quick? I'll pause. Nope, it's okay. It's not. It's not. It's not. It's not really important. Anyways, uh, Prismo has a quote at one point where he says, uh, "Idealism is for children." Oh, his name's Ridley. Harrison Ford. No, it's not. Harrison Ford's no, character's not. name is Ridley. Ridley is the alien from Samus Returns. I, Prismo says, "Idealism is for children, and a child is not fit to govern an empire." And I think that's where um, I feel like my dad's probably going to get a little upset with me for saying this. And he's definitely going to call me to have a chat after this episode. Because we're talking about politics, baby. Woo! Woo! Uh, that's what the episode title is going to be called, Politics, Baby. Woo! Woo! Um, or maybe not. You never know. Maybe it wasn't called that, and you got to this point in the episode, and you're like, hey, wait a minute. It wasn't called that. And if you'd saved that... Well, then you get a gold star, buddy. Pat yourself on the head and jump out of your car because we don't want to hear you anymore. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, all right. So so here's what I think maybe I, – I would say I identify as a liberal than a Democrat politically. But I think that this quote from Prismo is something that could potentially be seen as a negative for the Democratic Party in America. Mm-hmm. And – I, I know politics, whatever, blah, blah. Someone's president, someone's not. Who? It's all... Hashtag, you know, hashtag no one's my president. We're talking about stuff, but if you want to know what we think about America, listen to our episode on uh, Talladega Nights to Battle of Ricky Bobby. Uh, there's more of that there. So that's where, that's, where, that's where my real thoughts are. But for the sake of this... Uh, no, just keep talking. Just keep acting like you're going to say something and then don't. Like, keep, just keep being like, yeah, so guys, you know, this is about to get a little politics. But hey, listen, go listen to our other step. That's where we talk about, you know, this isn't this isn't about politics, but I'm saying it's politics. So just listen up because what I'm about to say might be offensive to some people, maybe not. But this is just politics and that's how it goes in politics, baby. Well, OK, so Prismo is talking about idealism, saying idealism is, is for children. Uh, oh, that's why. Can you look up the lyrics to "Everything's Not Awesome"? Oh yeah, yeah. Because yeah. that's this. It's related to this quote. I just remember. Um, so the the one problem that I think could maybe be seen with the Democratic Party or certain people within the Democratic Party is a lot of Democratic. <laughs> what? Whoa! I think I finally get Radiohead. <laughs> Yeah, that's from... I've never looked at the lyrics for this. If you've never seen the Lego movie second part, go watch it. I really like it. Dude, that's amazing. And my roommate, who shall not be named... uh, Oh, which one? The one who shall not be named. He... he, Like like this one? Or this one? That one. Okay. Uh, He thinks the the second Lego movie is better than the first one. And I don't know if I can agree with him on that. (sighs) That's tough. But we can all agree that the Lego Batman movie is better than both of them. Anyways. Will Arnett, shout out. Um... Come on, podcast. We'll talk about I, whatever I just movie want you carbs. want to, but it can't be a movie you're in because we don't watch those. Okay. Wait, what? He knows. Anyways, so I think that a lot of, and I don't know a lot about politics, so I could be just making stuff up, blowing smoke out of my butt. But I, th- I from what I know of things, it feels like a lot of um, what I know of things. Democratic plans are idealistic, but in the long run don't have the best results. Yeah. Like uh there's I think it's I think it's the Green New Deal or whatever which is like AOC and them put out and I think that's a good plan. I do think that that's something we should be looking into. But they want to um like get rid of fossil fuels by a certain date, but as of now we don't have anything to replace them. Right. Replace fossil fuels with. Well, and fossil fuels are pretty integral to how we run our society. Honda is actually working on this. They are creating well, an Honda's entire not they are making an entire city powered by hydrogen fuel cells. Maybe it's Toyota. But I don't know. Anyways. It's a car company. Um, Maybe it's Nissan. So that's to say that Prismo's statement is very much a conservative statement. That yeah. Idealism is a go- is for children. You can't run a but he's basically saying you can't run a government on idealism. Well, I don't even I don't even know if I would say it's conservative. I would say it's I would say it's more grounded in reality than that because idealism is just that. Well ideals. This is where the Lego movie comes in, baby. So the first Lego movie, if you don't know, if you're a big old honking idiot like Sam Thompson, he hasn't watched the Lego Is movie. that your friend? Yes. Hey, what's up, Sam? Um, I like your profile picture on Twitter. He, he, he hasn't seen th- that. No, it scares me. <laughs> it's like Reggie Gigas Wario, if any of you were wondering. Reggie it's Gigas. terrifying. Well, Reggie Gigas is one of my favorite Pokemon. So. He would be your favorite Pokemon. Why? Um, I also like Reggie Ice and Reggie Rock. 
and all damn. You just like Reggie. I do. Um, phew, something hot just went in my eye. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the it's first like a movie is about like the badness of capitalism, right? Right, and that's pretty overt. I oh, think. absolutely, Lord uh, Business. I mean, come and on. then like the song, this, it's a famous song, "Everything Is Awesome," mm-hmm. which if you listen to the lyrics. Everything's really not awesome because it's all corporate propaganda. But anyways, we're not talking about the bad movie. And we Everything. Never will, we never will because it's about something, all you freaking idiots. But in the second movie, there's this song, Everything's Not Awesome, where yeah. they realize everything's not awesome all the what time. Do you, how do you want to do this? And that's okay. So I'm going to read. Wait, one... you could have just looked it up on my phone. Nope, I couldn't have. That's impossible. Uh, so I'm going to read one stanza from this song. All right. Whoa, well, uh, I think I finally get no, Radiohead. not that stanza. Bro, it's you later. should check out Elliot Smith. Shut up. I'm trying to find it. All right. Are you ready? This is a quote. This is a stanza from that song. Everything's not awesome. Things can't be awesome all of the time. It's an unrealistic expectation, but that doesn't mean we shouldn't try to make everything awesome in a less idealistic kind of way. We could maybe aim for not bad because not bad. Well, that would be real great. So it's not that like ideal idealism in itself is probably problematic, as Prismo was saying. Because it is like you said, it's ideal. It's un it's unattainable. Yeah, you can't I don't attain know the perfect. If I would agree but that doesn't mean we shouldn't strive okay. to be ideal. Right. Okay. So because, I would agree with that. Because if you try to be the best that you can be, you will be the best that you can be. You may not be as good as you think you can be. Right. But if you strive for more than you can be, then you will be as your best. Well, at the end of the day, that's something that is extremely relative. Like, how do you know when you're at your best? How do you know when something is at its when best? When you break the rod of Pfizer. You can't. You absolutely cannot. You did. Uh, no, you can't know when you're at your best. Oh. And this is the same thing with perfection, you know. Everybody's perfection doesn't exist because... It's like Arilo Escobar. You gotta pull the mayor's tooth, man. You can't shoot him. Um... But we we talked about this. You know, that's from 100 bucks. Unless you go to school here, then no money. Honestly, yeah. If you tweet us and you're like, oh, I know what that is, then I'll give you 100 smackers. Um, But we talked about this in my uh, cult television class with Star Trek, um, the original series, specifically in the episode, Let Let This Be Your Last Battlefield. It's about race. Overtly. Well, Star Trek is always about race. Now, granted, I do not agree with that sentiment. Because although there are elements there, and we learned this in intermediate production about controlling your imagery, although there are elements there, that is not what I think that the episode is about overtly and in, in, in the most um, I just substantial way. I just burp, Trick. I'm so sorry. But one of the questions that one of the students asked um, in the discussion post was, is Star Trek saying Who that... Who teaches this class? Burkhead. Okay. Um... It's it's asking the que- they ask the question is humanity good or is it striving to be good and she didn't let me say this but I really wanted to so I'm glad I'm going to say here number one that humanity is not good I take that back number one you have to define what is good and you have to define are you talking about what is good humanity is just a high chew man oh, high chews are good though but it, is it candy there's a lot there that I want to dissect, but I'm not going to right now. Um, But I think, and I I didn't think about this. If uh, if you've never had a high chew, go to the store right now and buy them because they're good. They are good. Um, Unless you have a cavity. Do it anyway. I'll give you cavities! (sighs) Um, First, you have to define... Are you talking about good as a universal thing? Or are you talking about morality? Right and oh, we wrong. talked about this in my philosophy class. Um, and I would say, at least in this case, what they were saying is the universality of good and evil, right? And so, number one, humanity is not good. Humanity will never be good because there is too much evil. And go read Frankenstein by Mary Shelley. Read up on Tabula Rasa by Jean Locke, and you'll agree with me. You know what I was thinking today? Have, I haven't seen every adaptation of Frankenstein. Spoilers, slight spoilers for the book. Have you seen the, the Dave Harbour one? You mean uh, Frankenstein's Monsters Monster Frankenstein? I think so. Yes. That was on Netflix. That was I good. I saw it the day it came out. That was really good. Jake! 
Um, Your nose just got real big. Spoilers for slight spoilers for the book Frankenstein. I know Jay just told you to read it, but you probably weren't going to read it anyways. Let's be honest. Um, so in the book, you know how like he goes to like the family's cottage or whatever. Yeah. Has, has that ever happened in a film adaptation? I have no idea. I've only so I, like it, I haven't I like seen. Hasn't, but that's like one of my favorite parts of the book. The only one I've seen. That's when he's like, "Oh no, I'm a monster!" And then he goes and tries to kill Victor. Well, yeah, but he's only. Well, he didn't try to kill Victor. He's, he's like, only "Hey, make me a wife." A monster, because that is the first interaction that he has. Yeah, was he that, should. He should have watched Megabind. Was that Victor was scared of him, and and it's no, Victor's no, 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 own no. I'm fault. I'm talking about in the cottage when he's like. With that family, and there's a oh, blind guy. Yeah, 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 yeah. And and, and, the and they're like, girl comes yes, up and it's like, ah! yes. I know exactly what you're talking about. Um, but yeah, I read that book and I don't think I liked it, but I also I did. Oh, dude, this is I reference this book all the time because I think it is so applicable to so many aspects because it really does deal with the root of humanity. And they pose, they ask the question, "Is humanity good?" And the answer is no. And then they're like, "Does." Star Trek present this ideal that humanity can be good. And I would say that the answer is yes. We're not talking about Star Trek, and I can go into this very well, deeply. Here's a quote from Batman v Superman for you. Uh, if God is all powerful, then he cannot be all good. Right. But if God is all good, then he, can't be he all cannot powerful. be all powerful. Yep. Bald uh, how is that, Jesse. How Who is, is that? it? It's Jesse he's, no, he's not bald yet. Okay. How is that relative? Related? I don't know. Figure it out. Think, um, about, it. I, I think, think it, about it. Think about it. I think it is. Uh, I, I don't know off the top of my head why, but I think it is. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of things problematic with that statement. Um, I honestly I forgot why I was talking about this. I really don't feel like either of us have said anything like this whole episode, but we're like over fifty minutes. We're so, hey, I think we're having a good conversation. Right? Um. Anyways. But basically, fuck, basically, I forgot why I was talking about basically, this. Basically, we're stupid. Honestly, though. Subscribe to my SoundCloud. I had a name the other day, but I forgot what it was. It was Parappa the Rappa. Parappa the Rappa? I'm just kidding. That's trademark. Um, God, I really want to remember why I was talking about that. Why I was talking about Frankenstein. Okay, stuff. well, I know that this episode might actually end up running a little longer than other ones, but I do want to talk about I do think the politics thing is like is well, is really relevant and prevalent. Yeah, and I and I agree with you 100 percent because of one word. Okay, Ridley says politics. Oh, he does. At one he point. does. And then earlier. Uh, oh wait, hold on. I wrote down the the. This is after snails dies. And then and then earlier in the movie, um, the mage says, "I'm an aristocrat," and so she's like, "Oh, Prismo." No, 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 no. The glasses girl who doesn't have glasses. The glasses girl who doesn't have glasses. She's like, I'm an aristocrat. This isn't supposed to be happening to me. Okay, okay. I found the quote. When Snails dies, glasses girl who doesn't have glasses tries to uh, comfort old Harrison Ford, who's also young. Uh, And he says, she tells him that Snails died for a good cause. And he says, what cause was that? The Empress against Porphyrian? Politics? I'm through with all that. Oh, is that is that where that's from? Okay, I'm not going to die over a power struggle between a couple of uh, greedy mages. Yeah, and I and I totally agree with that. And right now, and I think I said this at the top of the episode, is I am existentializing and self actualizing. And I Jake think really just needs to watch an ASMR video of someone brushing their toilet. <laughs> well, you're probably right. Um, if I'm really, exists, I'm also that's gross. really enjoying listening to my like, voice right now. It's very soothing, but it also be like, but I totally agree. Dude, with you. you know what they should do? DreamWorks should make an over the hedge ASMR video. Is it over the hedge in the fist bowl? Probably. Because if it's know. not, it definitely should be. I don't know. All right, are you going to cut me off again? Or our, gonna... our boy Chef Frillis would agree to that. Yes, you he that absolutely is? would. Do you listen to him? Do you watch him on me? YouTube? Shay Frillis does not need our help, but if you want to watch some vi- good, 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 good analysis videos on the Shrek franchise, go look up Shay Frillis. Yes, on very, YouTube. very good. His profile picture is the crab from Moana. Shiny. And honestly, like that for like, I would love to redo Shrektober after watching those videos because I have gained so much oh, more I, understanding. Seen before we did so much more understanding of of the film franchise as a whole. And honestly, I don't hate the third movie. Anymore. It was too late. We dumbed it up. Um and I and I know that he says he doesn't like it, but I do think. That well, I mean, it's easily the there. worst in the franchise, but I I I still 
enjoy it. Yeah. It made me the laugh the most. Um, I, I, and I agree with what Ridley says here about politics because like at the end of the day, really like, what does it matter? You know, R- snails is dead. Why? Because it's some political here junk go, that he go, got caught here up go. in. Here's a song from uh boss baby. What the world needs now is love. Yes, I just nodded my head at Jake that you didn't hear that. I didn't. Do it again. I'll close my eyes this time. No, I wasn't talking to you. I'm oh, sorry. I'm never talking to you, okay? What about right then? I'm always talking to them. What about right then? Are you even paying attention? Are you talking to me right now? I just said I'm never talking to you. Okay? You're confusing me. All right, it's my You're turn You're making my now. brain hurt more than it right, already does. So we talked about politics. We talked about whatever Jake talked about. But there's also, I think... Oh, let me finish. I have one more point okay. of moral contradiction. Well, you go. The staff is red, and red bad. Big is bad, small is good. Well, but at the beginning, he makes like a green staff. Yeah. And it doesn't work. Oh, oh, and also, dragons are like... Are like... Uh, and this is the same way with Lava Girl. Dragons are tools for destruction. Also, speaking but of dragons, is like this is leaping ahead a bit, but I unfortunately vu. I don't think the dragons blew anything up. We might need to look <sighs> up like the final scene if you can find it on YouTube. But uh, I don't think they did. And if All they right. did, talk, 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 talk about that's yourself. really sad, and that's a very missed opportunity. And we've been called freaking Dungeons and Dragons. No one even like rolled a dice. Ugh. I don't think. Go talk about your stuff. Okay. Well, and I'm just going to briefly jump over this. So we Whoa, 2022? What? I thought I was telling you there, there's a reboot one. Oh, I thought it was Chris Pratt, Ansel Elgort? What? I hope he's playing the same dude because he was almost young Han Solo. That would be funny. Barry Peterson, what does he do? Oh, Quit talking about Sisters. people and do look up whatever you were looking up. Oh, okay. You talked in and all and all. Um, I'm 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 only gonna talk about this briefly so we can get you guys out of here because we know you don't want to listen to us forever. But um, there's all the politics stuff, but then also throughout the movie, there's a lot of things that uh, point to like destiny. And I think I think honestly that should have been the focus of the movie. It's the question of destiny because Dungeons and Dragons is a role playing game where everything is made up, and that's where I think like the spoof angle would have been better for the film. Because then the narrator could have been narrating throughout and, you know, like he, it'd be the question of do we have a destiny or is it all up to some om, omnipotent person, you know, controlling everything in our lives? Because there's there's several throats, throats, there's several quotes throughout the film that point to like meanings of destiny. And most of them have to do with Ridley, you know, whatever his name is, Ripley's believe it or not, um, where like there's certain instances where the elf says, only you were meant to pass, talking about how only he could go in the cave. Or there's a point where the dwarf is like, I want to go help. And then the elf tells him, we were not meant to enter this place. This task they must complete alone. In which he's talking about snails and Wind Rider, whatever his name was. Yeah. Ripley, Ridley. Um, Wind Rider. And that's when Snail dies. And so I think that points to yes there is a destiny and you can't escape it snails had to die for ridley to get the staff and get the anger and then defeat the people in the end but then the final scene mucks all of that up all right so in the final scene is when i was talking about when prisma was like you think you can steal my destiny i'll kill a thousand children before i let this company die if you know what that's from then i <laughs> say, say it again love you no. Okay. Uh, Prismo, Prismo says this. He says, you'll pay for that, boy. You really think you can steal my destiny? I'll invent a new destiny, especially for you. Full of pain. A new kind of pain. And new senses to feel it with. And so in response to this, I wrote down that it's all about destiny. For Prismo, it, it's all about destiny. Whatever is in the cards is as it will be. And in a way... This is kind of like the ultimate conservative viewpoint. So I brought it back to politics here. No one can do anything to change their destiny or alter their place in society. It's all predetermined, traditional values and all that. But then when the protagonist breaks the rod and says, I won't become you, that's like the ultimate liberal viewpoint, I think, because he's like changing everything. But that seems to imply that we are not beholden to our destiny. 
because he says, I will not become you, and smashes the rock. However, with everything that Narda, who is the elf, it says, the two quotes I mentioned, and she says other things throughout, um, it would seem that this whole adventure was Ridley's destiny all along. And even Savriel, who's like the guy who made the rod in the first place, I've been calling him Pfizer, uh, his, oh, ghost, that's who you're his about. ghost talks to um, Ridley and is like, only someone who is worthy can take the rod from me. And then Ridley takes it. Uh, so that's that, what she said. That again said. points to like destiny being inescapable. So ultimately, whoever wrote this movie needs to stop taking uh, pills. All right. I think it was Courtney Solomon. I know she's a director. Well, Courtney Solomon needs to stop taking pills. Whatever pills they were on when they were making this, don't do those pills because thematically, this movie makes no sense. I think you were onto something. You were so close. We were this close to greatness. It's not. That's not what he sounds like, but that's what he says. Um, can we tell you his name? He sounds more like this. We were this close to greatness. That's a little bit closer. Dude, I, don't I love think it is, cause that I love like Mads Mickelson, man. Like I know that's not who says the quote, but he's in that movie, dude. He dies pretty quickly, doesn't he? No, no, he dies about three quarters of the way through. Maybe Did they kidnap him. I've only seen it once. Um, he dies on spoilers the... for Rogue One. Darth Vader's in it. He uh dies. That was on like the... a mega he, he dies on the. He I hope died... we've all seen Rogue One. He dies on the platform when Jalen Urso or whatever her name is goes to. Free him after he sent the. Uh... Are you talking about Jaden Smith, the Karate Kid? Yeah, I haven't seen the original Karate Kid. Anyways, uh, that's um... all I have for today. What do you got? Okay, yeah, I mean, yeah, that's all I got too. Okay, well, I hope you learned a lot and loved a lot. Yeah, this I, has I think been th- reading Rainbow in between the lions. I think there was definitely some Did good conversation here, um, for sure. That, Snap, crackle, that, pop, baby, we the Keebler elves. That transcends beyond. You know this movie particularly, and that's what makes it. I think film. honestly, honestly, I'm gonna steal a quote from one of my favorite YouTube boys, Carson Runquist. Watch this movie. Oh shit, I don't remember the quote. Watch this movie and make up your own opinion, something like that. Also, go check out Carsten. Also, but he also has a podcast. Don't listen to his podcast because that's our competition. But we don't have YouTube. We don't do YouTube film stuff. So well, we don't put the podcast. We on don't. YouTube. We we don't analyze films on YouTube. Is what I'm saying. Right. But do go check out my YouTube so channel you called Jake look Career. At, Carsten uh, Runquist's YouTube channel, but don't got listen. Some good stuff on there. Don't listen to his podcast. Unless, Carsten, if you're somehow listening to this and you want to team up, then people can listen to your podcast, but only if you team up. They were in the top 100 on Spotify. Then, and only then. So we we have, we have can't let them, unless they're going to help us. We hey, don't want we're people. in we top, help you know, bajillion or whatever. We're on there somewhere. Are we? Yeah. Okay. We're a number on there. Did you look up if it blows up or not? Oh, no. Uh, I didn't see anything, but I think there's a Transformers thing here. He breaks the... Sm- he, breaks the an, he breaks the the rod. I feel like there's a, an at least an implied three. What? Actual two implied three. Actual, like, one implied three. What happens in the beginning? Does anything blow up? I don't also, think so. why does Dragon's Blood set water on fire? What was that all about? Because it's made out of sodium. And when sodium interacts with water, it turns fire. Uh, do you know what salt is? Did I say salt or did I say sodium? Uh, let me repeat my question. Do you know what salt is? Uh, sodium chloride yeah. is not pure sodium. And you pour that in water, it makes it colder. Yeah, sodium chloride. Not sodium. You know what? Do you know what salt kills? Also, snails. Ah. Mm. So D- Dathomir, Dathomir, the, the real Dathomir, Dathomir mean... was salty that snails was beating him up. Oh, also, I meant to mention: if any of you have seen, I wish I doubt anyone has. If anyone, if any of you have seen the 1990s Captain America movie, the uh, fight between Dathomir and snails reminded me of the fight between Cap and Red Skull in that movie. I have not seen that. No, you haven't. You haven't seen ever any stories or shit up. Yeah, but I know what happens in the swamp. No, you don't. You said I was a girl. Doesn't matter. Gingers aren't real. That's that's. You say gingers aren't real. Yes, he's not ginger. You're not ginger. You're right, and I'm real. All right, Jake said implied three, whatever. That's all we got. Listen to our podcast. Are you gonna? Am I gonna let me explain why it's an implied three? No, no. You just gotta tell him where to talk to us. You don't get to explain. Oh, um. If you like what we had to say, I think I think that we had a really good conversation or, here. Or today. if you think a haichu is a candy. I think we made a pretty compelling argument. Also, define what candy is. 
So, to, okay. Unless so here, you've, if you've watched Adventure Time, and I don't mean in like an episode, if you've watched all of Adventure Time. Not Distant Lands, just the original You don't have to series. define it because you know what candy is. But you do have to say that you've watched Adventure Time. And then prove to us that you have. Yeah, okay, okay. So here's what we got to do. Somehow. For the email, for this week's uh, daily email of the week, what I want you to do is daily tell us. So <laughs> define candy unless you've seen Adventure Time in its entirety. If you have seen Adventure Time in its entirety, your first part will be what your favorite episode is or what your favorite arc is. Let's go with that. And the next part is if you think Hi Choose a Candy and then give us the argument. That's for the email. Now for the podcast, um, what's something they can do for the podcast? They have, well, for Twitter, they got to tell us. If Shit, they, they the Twitter. Fuck <laughs> yeah, the Twitter. If they, if they understood <laughs> that reference. Uh, yeah, so on, on, on Twitter, at Pac- oh, uh, the email is pacinopodcast at gmail.com. Candy goes there for the Twitter Pacino Pod or at or Pacino Pod. Is it can- candy? Right. Um, for Twitter at Pacino Pod, let us know if you know that quote. And actually, what what I want you to do is either do a GIF or an image of the person um, who says that quote. Additionally, um, I want to uh, give us your mom and dad's, please. Give us your honestly. We got we got two. We got two. They're in the bank. You heard them. Real steel, right? It was real steel. Know. Whatever it was that was. So you know Happening that we do it. Happened will happen, right? And if you know what that's from, then uh, you know what. Then you're a leg up on the email. There you go. Exactly. Well, now I feel like you just told them where it's from. I didn't. You did. If you can tell them what episode it's from, if you can tell us what episode it's from, it could be from Rogue One. They don't know. You, you're right. Only three of them raised their hand. Stout and sauerkraut. Uh, yeah, stout and sauerkraut. I wanted to say the surf's up thing. Did I say the surf's up thing? You did. Okay. I was going to say it here, but I said it at the beginning. Get this bit off of my face.